Hello and welcome back to the channel. Gonna have a look at setting up lighting uh, for windows in a building and this will work for whatever you want to set it up for. Uh, I've got a cottage here um, which I'm going to use for the video and basically what I want to do is just show you an easy way of doing this directly within Giants Editor so it will require no other software just Giants Editor and I'm going to show you another way where we will use Blender to make things a little bit more interesting and give the windows a bit more character and whatever else uh, so <clears throat> I've just got some pretty basic kind of windows this building has no interior at all or anything like that and uh, I'm going to have a look at showing you how to set up like I say pretty basic sort of setup um, for illumination in the windows so what I'm going to do is create some transform groups so I'm going to create a couple here to start with and then I'm going to take this one and cut it and paste it into that one then I'm going to take the all of the transform groups cut those and I'm going to put them into the main transform group for the cottage itself this one here I'm going to rename to Illume for illumination and then this one here I'm going to change to lamp 01 you can call this whatever you want <clears throat> and then within here I'm going to be creating some primitive objects a primitive plane to be specific that I'm then going to set up in the actual window itself now these particular windows the frames on them uh, are slightly um, different depths the one on the left is more forward than the one on the right so I can't use one plane to go across all of them uh, some of the windows around the front of the building are a little bit different they're just one particular window pane if you like window glass pane so they will be a little bit easier but uh, that's okay um, one thing I would say or suggest when you're setting up illumination uh, for a building depending on the size of the building and the distance between the windows themselves I wouldn't recommend to have all of them especially in this particular scenario where they're so close together if you illuminate all of them from a distance it potentially will just look like a big yellow blob or whatever color you choose to set the window at um, so for this particular scenario I'm not going to be doing all of them anyway or I might pause and just do all of them I don't know we'll see how it goes uh, so <clears throat> what I'm going to do is create a primitive plane so I'm going to go to create primitives plane then I'm going to cut that and put it inside the lamp 01 transform group and then what I want to do with the plane selected I'm just going to drag it out <clears throat> so you can see it's just a primitive plane there's nothing much to it so what I want to do here is kind of get it set up on the window so I'm going to use the interactive placement tool you can do control B or you can go edit and then interactive placement and I'm just going to click somewhere here middle-ish of the window so I can actually get the scaling and everything correct which will be better at this angle so I'm just going to drag across on the little scaling dot there to get into roughly the right position and I'm going to rotate this on the uh, X by 90 and you might need to bring it out just a little bit so it's not quite so inset to the window whatever else this will become clearer a bit later on when we actually add the illumination to it <coughs> and then what I'm going to do is just basically scale it up so it fits the whole window pane here something like that will probably be okay can drag it out a little bit just to get it roughly the right sort of size yeah that will be fine so something along those kinds of lines and then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create a emissive texture so that uh, when we actually set all the parts up uh, this will then light up so I'm going to minimize that down and then what I'm going to do is open up paint.net now I've just upgraded or installed Windows 10 which I absolutely hate so I'm going to be struggling to find what I want a little bit for the time being uh, paint.net um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this image because it doesn't need to be that big I'm just going to set it to 64 by 64 <coughs> like so 
and then I'm going to select a yellow color here I'm going to go over to the paint bucket and we'll just click this will be my emissive texture again you can choose whatever color you want if you want red windows or green ones or whatever else just have at it and I'm going to save this so I'm going to go file save as we'll put this in the uh, same folder here so I'm just going to call this um, again it doesn't really matter what you call it you can call it I'm just going to call it emissive that'll do and I'm going to save this as a DDS um, DXT1 mipmaps super sampling and click OK and we'll close that down so if we go into the folder here there's our new texture so we go back to the giant editor and then what we want to do is bring in the material editing window so we're just going to go window material editing <coughs> and in here I'm going to first of all go to the attributes window click on shape and I want this to be tangents and distance blending uh, the cast shadow and receive shadow I wouldn't particularly worry about that too much uh, in this particular scenario entirely up to you if you want to add those but the actual main cottage has already got all of this stuff and because I'm laying a new um, mesh or object over the original um, object if you have them both in such close proximity again casting and receiving shadows that might cause some problems so in this particular scenario I'm not going to add that um, and I'm also not going to make this a rigid body because again the actual main cottage is a rigid body so I don't need to do that and then what I'm going to do is come down to the material editing window and I'm going to add a custom shader. So I'm going to click on the replace or add new shader. And now I have to remember where I've got everything because I've had to reinstall all of my stuff from scratch with the uh, <coughs> change over to Win 10. And I'm going to go down to the shaders. And the one I'm going to use here is the dashboard light shader. You can see at the moment nothing's happening, it's gone transparent um, and that's because at the moment we don't have our custom texture loaded. So I'm going to click on the little browse buttons here and navigate to my folder and we're going to add in our emissive texture we just created. And as you can see it's still doing nothing. <laughs> that's because, well, it's gone back to a solid shade but um, in the lighting control here it's set to zero. So what we need to do is increase that to 1 and now it gives us our illumination. So I'm going to bring that back into the appropriate place here for the window itself. Something like that. You'll have to experiment with that a bit depending on you know, the model that you're going to be applying it to and the rest of it. So we now have that set up. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this, Control D, and then I'm going to bring this one over to the other window here <clears throat> and then I'm going to scale this one down so you might want to set the rotation back to zero just so you can actually get a better idea of what scaling needs to be applied here on the X axes so I'm just going to scale this in so it fits in nicely to the window frame Something like that probably will do. And then we can put our 90 rotation back on again. Might need to just come out a little bit more. Because this one is set back a little bit further, might need to just drag it back in a little bit more. Something like that would work quite well. So there we have our actual emissive side of things set up. So this would be kind of um, <coughs> giving the effect that there's lights on inside the building and this is the light that's being um, that's shining through the actual glass or whatever uh, but the actual main lighting will come from an actual real light so you can kind of rename these if you want to or whatever else I'm just going to leave it like that that's perfectly fine uh, and then what I want to do is create an actual light so I'm going to first of all create a new transform group here and this is somewhat important because of the way that it works with the scripting. Now this particular setup is going to be 
for a static building that we will import into a map through Giants Editor and then you can just call this whatever you want because I'm going to be using a point light I'm just going to name it as such for the transform group and then I'm actually going to create a point light so I'm going to go create light and then I'm going to cut that and put it inside the point light transform group and then we need to change a few attributes here so over in the attributes window I'm going to go to light I'm going to change it from directional to point light and the range we don't need it to be quite as much as that so somewhere around about four if you look at one of the base game um, buildings it's around four to six I think something like that for the uh, window illumination so four is what I'm going to go with here then the actual rotation I'm going to set back to zero on all axes and then what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to then position this in the right place so if I take the plane here it doesn't matter which one you use I'm just going to use this one here but uh, for this particular window setup um, <clears throat> because it's got two separate kind of uh, emissive um, parts to it if you like uh, you might want to move it around a little bit but I'm just going to take the translate XYZ with left shift left control and C I'm going to click on my point light left shift left control and V and then we can just kind of move this around a little bit so we might want to bring it over a little bit so it's more central to the window and then bring it back a little bit so we don't get this kind of light bleed around the building where you wouldn't kind of expect it to be so something perhaps maybe like that would be more than enough more than adequate so we can have something like that and then it's just a case of um, duplicating that wherever you want around the actual building itself so <clears throat> I'm not, not going to do all of them like I say uh, but uh, we'll just do maybe one more and then <clears throat> so for this one here I'm just going to go control D and copy the whole thing and then I'm going to delete this plane because I don't need that one and then I'm going to take this one here and I'm going to put that on maybe I don't know this window here will do that'll be fine so first of all we want to rotate this by 180 on the Y axis and then I'm going to drag it back out this way so we can actually see it there we go and again you might want to put that back to zero just so you can see it a bit clearer to get your scaling right I don't think this will be too far off actually now that's pretty good so we can put our rotation back on again and then just kind of work with that to get it into the right position so perhaps maybe something like that and you might want to kind of zoom out and then just check that there's no flickering going on because we've got two things in such close prox proximity to each other you might get some flickering or whatever else but we should be okay there <coughs> and then again with my point light here um, I'm just going to basically do the same thing so I'm going to take this plane here copy the XYZ with left shift left control and C we'll click on my light left shift left control and V and bring it out here and again just kind of position it somewhere where you think would be appropriate so you might want to maybe I don't know go up a little bit perhaps so it's more central to the window because these ones are a little bit higher than the ones at the back and then just drag it back a little bit so you're not getting any sort of bleed unnecessary bleed around the, the uh, brickwork here or whatever else something like that would probably be, be okay <coughs> and then we have our windows set up with illumination so <coughs> if we go back to our <coughs> plane here for the light in control in the day it will look like so let me um, get rid of those things so in the day it will look like that and then in the night time uh, when the script is activated the windows will then become illuminated like so now as far as I know to my understanding the actual script itself that we will be using for this is a visibility node type of script so <clears throat> basically the lights will need to start off as being invisible and then the script will make them visible 
so if you have them already visible at the start that could potentially cause problems so what you need to do which is why I created uh, a separate transform group just for the actual real lights is to remove the visibility of those within Giants Editor like so and that way then the actual script will see them off and then we are, we'll actually turn them on at the appropriate times whereas if you leave them visible uh, potentially uh, because the script as I say needs to see them off to turn them on if they're already on it might cause some problems so just by taking the visibility away um, you should be okay there I think that would be the better way to do it so now we have all of that set up we need to basically tell the system what's going to go on with all of this so we need to add in a user attribute and the easiest way to actually get all of that is to go into the base game um, folders so if I go into my game installation folder here data maps and then just open up one of the base maps with notepad plus plus or um, whatever text editor you want to use and then just do a search with control F and just type in there night and it should then take you to the appropriate place with all the user attributes on the map and what we have here is uh, attributes for this particular script setup so we want to create a new user attribute which will be an on create and that will be a type of script callback then we're going to use the night illumination on create um, script itself so this basically will tell the game to turn the lights on at night uh, and all the illumination and everything so you can just double click wherever you need to and copy and paste that in if you want to do it that way so we need to open up the user attributes window so I'm going to go um, user attributes bloody pop-ups uh, and then click on my lamp 01 transform group and we'll paste that into their script callback because that's the type that we need to select so script callback and then we'll add and then what we're going to do is take the actual name of the script when you double click this it because it's got a full stop or whatever you want to call it decimal point it doesn't select all of it so just click and highlight the whole thing control C to copy that and then you can paste that in no problem like so then we'll do the same for this one uh, so I'm just going to type this in so on create type script callback add and then paste it in like so <clears throat> and that's pretty much that that's all you need to do there really for a static building um, and then once you actually get this onto a map or whatever else uh, in the daytime as I showed before it will just be a grey window like all the others and then um, <clears throat> once it comes around to night time or whatever time the script is set up for uh, seven o'clock I think it is might be a bit later than that something like that then the script will run and it will turn on the illumination and whatever else so that's pretty much that it's a fairly straightforward process if you're not too bothered about the you know the actual windows themselves if you don't want too much uh, you know if there's decoration and all that sort of stuff in the windows doesn't bother you that much then or if you've already got a building you don't want to use blender don't know how to use blender then this potentially is a way of doing it just using the giants editor to then create your primitive planes and set all the, t the different parts up for the emissive texture and whatever else to uh, get the windows to illuminate so the other way I'm going to show you then if we do that what I'll do is um, I'll set all of this up and then I'll get all of the buildings uh, together um, so you can see the differences once I actually sort it all out because uh, I'm still reinstalling all of my software uh, now that I've gone over to Windows 10 um, so I've still sort of got to create some sample I've still got to create a sample mod map to put all of this in yet um, which I had one before but uh, now I've got to start all over again unfortunately but it is what it is um, so what I'm going to do is open the uh, actual building in Blender itself now I'm using 2.81 uh, but uh, the process for the most part would be very similar uh, just the way I do it in 2.81 will be a little bit different if you're using 2.79 um, but uh, you know 
I've kind of moved on from 279 um, it's uh, yeah kind of old now and 2.8 and onwards is just so, so far superior in my opinion but anyway so we're going to open this up in Blender and we'll just see what we can do so I'm going to switch over to solid shape mode just so we can see what's going on a little bit better now what we want to do here is have a look at all the different parts so what I want to do is take the actual window panes and I'm going to separate them into a completely new object um, because of the way I want to actually put all this together <coughs> um, because the way as I've just shown um, previous the actual illumination side of things the the windows need to be a separate object they need to be in their own separate um, transform group hierarchy so that you can apply the script only in the places that you need it to be in if I was to leave them as part of the mesh here um, it wouldn't work properly because it would be trying to apply a script to an area that doesn't really have the control um, doesn't have doesn't need it or or whatever else it's you know not really the way to do it so what I'm going to do here is try and separate the actual window panes here and then put them into their own um, structure so uh, with this I'm going to hit tab and go into <coughs> edit mode and then with the face select so either click up here or you can press 3 on your keyboard so 1 is vertex, 2 is edge and 3 is face select uh, whichever way you prefer and I'm just going to go around and select all of the windows so I'm going to select this one here then hold left shift and continue to select all of the different windows now again obviously depending on how many windows you want to make illuminated will be you know up to you entirely and you would then potentially only select the ones that you're going to apply that to um, but I prefer to just do them all uh, and then you've got more control later on, later on if you choose to add more into it whatever else and the way I'm going to do this I'm going to add some kind of decoration if you want to call it that a bit more something to the windows themselves so they have curtains and blinds and stuff like that so not just quite as bland as just a grey window glass or window pane um, so now that I've got all of those selected I'm going to go <coughs> control P no that's not it I want to do P that's it sorry I'm still getting used to Blender myself uh, so separate so if I do that again so with all of those selected press P and then we're going to separate by selection so this will then create a new um, part here or complete new uh, set of um, setup of your mesh so <coughs> if we go back tab back into object mode when I select this one it's just showing the windows I select the cottage then the cottage is so selected so they are now completely separated and then what I want to do here is the cottage I want to leave as it is that's fine so I can hide that if I want to here by just clicking on the little eyeball so now I've got all of my windows going to go back into this one here <coughs> and then what I'm going to do is set all of these up with a new texture so I'm going to drag out a new window here and I'm going to go to um, let's do shader editor first I think uh, so I'm going to need a new material for this um, so what I'm going to do is I'll just go new material and I'll just rename this one so we'll just go uh, window underscore mat so we have our now our new material on there that's fine what I'll also do is going to switch over to cycles <coughs> while I'm here so we have our new material I'm going to add in um, some different textures so I'm going to go back to material preview and I'm going to go shift A texture image texture I'll just bring that in like so and then I'm just going to drag that in so it connects it up to the principal BSDF shader and I'm going to click open and I want to go into my farming simulator installation folder so I'm going to go into here farm sim 2019 data I have to remember where all of this is now maps textures European and then what I want to do is just trying to 
think which ones I want. Let's come down to this one I think. <clears throat> so building Quite sure what that is. That is so much preferred Windows 7. Anyway, that's the one I want. So I want that one there and then this emissive one here. So I'm going to go with the diffuse. And I'm just trying to think. That should be okay. That should be fine. So I'm going to double click on that one and bring that in. And you can see now if we go over to the actual windows it's a mess, they're all over the place and this is because we need to work with the UVs to get them all lined back up again so what I'm going to do here is go over to the UV editor go into edit mode and A to select them all and then what I want to do is basically just move these wherever I want to put them um, so <clears throat> if I let's see, let's select uh, if I turn syncing on, we'll select that one. Okay, so there's some of these which are actually overlapping, I think, on top of each other. That's okay. We can fix that. So I want to have maybe this one here. We're going to put some sort of curtains, maybe, I don't know, something like this. That will probably be okay. So if I go Alt A to deselect all of that, and we'll do this one here first. So I'm just going to go. Um, let's see if that's going to be appropriate. Yeah, that should be all right. So I'm just going to go G X and move it across to here then I'm going to go scale X and just bring it out a little bit and we'll go GX and move it across and then scale on the Y so S and Y and we'll scale this up GY to move it up a little bit something like that so we now have um, curtain type effect in the window there and you can kind of play around with this and scale it however you want so if we go back in edit mode we can go S and X and maybe scale that a bit more just so it fills up a little bit further of the gap G X to move it on the X axis something like that and I'm going to select this one which is this one over here so what I might do here is let's just select these I'm going to go G, X and just move them off to the side for now. We'll go Alt, A to deselect all of those. Select this one again. And I'm going to go <coughs> G, X and then G, Y, S, X to scale it on the X. I'm just using the mouse wheel here to zoom in so we'll just kind of get that somewhere about right. And then S and Y and scale it on the Y <coughs> G Y to move it on the Y S Y and get that somewhere about like so and then we'll do um, G X something like that perhaps that should be okay so we'll have some sort of curtain effects on that particular window. Again, you can do this however you want. Because this has got a window frame here, I don't want to include the black part because that's actually going to be built up by the actual window frame. So if we bring back the cottage here, you'll see that the window frame is here. So the the actual curtain would be, you know, end or meet in the middle here behind the window frame. So I don't need the black part. That's fine. Uh, and then you can just kind of go around and do all the others however you want them to be. So if I hide that again, um, <clears throat> so we can kind of work with some of the others. So if I go back into edit mode, Alt A, Alt -A to deselect and we'll do this one. Do the same thing again, however you want to do that. So you can just bring this one over and we'll just go G 
and then scale that up something like that and then SY GY and get that somewhere like that perhaps and then we'll um, select this one and we'll go G and move that into position something like that and then scale it up and we'll just move it over a little bit and then SY to scale it <coughs> GY to move it about a little bit SY and somewhat, something like that then we have two windows here with curtains in them <coughs> and you just keep going around till you've got all of those sorted out so let's just say for example we'll go with that forget the other ones we'll just do those ones and I'll do this one around the front here so this one here go back into edit mode alt a deselect this one here I'm going to put um, as blinds so we'll just go uh, G and move that over and then we'll just scale that up to whatever we want to get out of that <coughs> so GY GX and then scale to whatever you want to get so we'll do S and Y something like that so we have a blind there that should look okay <coughs> and the other ones like I said I'm not going to worry about those that's fine um, we can just leave them as they are or well, you could just kind of go around and <coughs> put them all the same whatever so we could just do like select all of these other ones here not that one and then these ones here so we'll do all of those and if I go U reset and then we'll just do maybe I don't know this one here perhaps so we'll just scale it down and then move it over something like that and then S and Y G Y something like that so all the others are just going to have like that kind of setup which is fine doesn't matter <coughs> you can have a bit more of a play around with that and that's pretty much that so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the shader editor now because this particular texture has been loaded in through um, a different file in a different folder and whatever else I've had issues with it exporting out correctly if it's still part you know if it's still attached to the actual shader and everything so what I would do here is just delete it remove it you've got all your UV mapping all set correctly and everything so we'll just uh, go to the center here right click join areas and just bring that across and then we, we now have all of that set up <coughs> and it's got our correct material on it and everything else, our material name and whatever so that's fine um, because I've separated this I'm going to need to export the cottage as well um, so what I would do here is to actually export them separately don't export them together just export them separately so if we bring back the cottage this is kind of what we'll end up with at the moment because there's no um, textures or anything applied to that which is fine uh, so you know we'll rename this to Windows that's fine and if we click on the cottage I'll just export this back out again um, so let's just do file export giant size 3d and if I go to my desktop and then what I'll do is I'll just call this um, what have I got? So let's just call this cottage one, that's fine. So we click on the little plus, it will just up it by one number, and then we'll just go export selected, and then we'll go export, then we'll click on our Windows file, export giant size 3D, and then we'll just rename this to Windows. And then make sure export selected is ticked, 
and export i3d so if we minimize that down for now and then we'll just basically open up this one <clears throat> and then I'm just going to go file save as click on the cottage one binary i3d save and replace we'll close that down we'll do the same with the windows so we'll open this up in the giant editor file save as windows binary i3d save and replace this will create all of my shapes files and everything so now I can open up the cottage i3d and add all my textures back in again so we'll go to here material editing we'll click on the browse button and we want the diffuse the specular and the normal map <clears throat> and then we're going to add in the building shader so we'll go into the farming simulator installation folder data shade shaders and building shader and then we're going to add in our custom texture here default specular we want to change that for our custom specular which is this one here so we'll do like so and then we're back to where we were before but now less windows which is fine so now we've got that uh, we can go file import windows and it brings all my windows back in but as you can see they're all like you know <clears throat> not right at the moment which is fine so we'll just do that and then with this one we can go into albedo and we go into the game installation folder so we'll go into um, eDrive Farmsim 2019 data <coughs> maps textures European we want to find our textures which is this one here and then so for the gloss and the normal what we're going to do is just use the shared so we'll just go data shared and we want uh, default specular and default normal like so you can see now we have our windows with curtains and various other different things <coughs> around the building however you want to set that up just adds a little bit more to it and the textures are all there so you know might as well use them um, so that's fine and then we need to set up our emissive stuff now because of the way I've done this um, all of the windows are now going to become emissive but in this particular scenario that's fine just going to go with that for now uh, so we'll open up our add or replace shader we'll go into here and this is on the windows transform group so we're going to go shaders dashboard lighting and again they go transparent because we need to add in our custom texture so under our custom texture we'll come into here we go data maps textures European and then we're going to add in our emissive texture like so and then come back up to the lighting control and we'll up that to one and there we go we've now got some really nice looking windows with illumination and everything else fantastic now if you wanted to do this um, a different way potentially what you would do here would be to actually separate all of the windows into their own individual windows section and then you would have like window one two three four five six seven and so on and so on or however many windows you want illuminated i was just kind of trying doing this a bit quick uh, so i've just kept them all together um, so again here what you would potentially want to do is create a transform group <coughs> and then make that your main transform group so again like i did uh, for my other one I'm just going to do cottage underscore main <coughs> and then if we go move up we'll take the cottage control x and put it in that transform group and then we can make another transform group well we'll make two actually and then we'll put that one into there 
and take those put into the main transform group we we'll take our windows control X and then put them into that one and move them up and then this one again would be my illumination so I'll go illume sorry not that one this one clicked on the wrong one so that one <coughs> and then this one here would be just lights you can call that whatever you want again so we'll just do lights and then potentially would want to put some real lights behind some of these windows I would again I wouldn't do all of the windows I would just do some of them um, so for for example um, I would just do like create light and then take this one and put into there and do the same again so we'll change this from a directional to a point light reduce that down to about four and then change our rotation on all axes and then kind of just play around with it a little bit so here we could go control B for interactive placement and click and then just drag that back a little bit or you might want to maybe put that in the middle as these windows are quite close to each other so we could go control B and put it somewhere there like so and then move this one back a little bit something like that <coughs> so part of this is going to then be illuminated and then we can do the same around the front so in this particular scenario uh, what's that one that's the blinds yeah so again you know up to you you could uh, <coughs> create another light here take that one and put it into there <coughs> and then we'll just do the same again so rotation to zero point light four and maybe do that on the front door so we go control B and click and then just move it back a little bit something like that <coughs> so we'll now have some light shining out here on the front and a little bit of light shining out on the back and then potentially you could do the same here so <coughs> we'll just copy this one control B and click and then just move that one back like so something along those lines so it kind of breaks it up a little bit something like that and then we do exactly the same thing again as before so we'll come into here and we'll do on create so we'll do on oops create I spelt that right yes script callback and I'm going to have to get the thingy again so <coughs> if we go back into the installation folder here Uh, this one maps we'll open that up control F night search and then we'll just take the name of the script copy that and paste that into there like so and that's just basically going to control everything now so this one here will make that invisible again so the script can turn it on and we can go ahead and save that so now we have a cottage that's got basic lights basic windows and everything else and now we've got one which has actually got some nice curtains and blinds and things like that now I've done this pretty quickly so you could use whatever textures you have available um, or you know space your UVs out a little bit so they're not all using the same curtain design um, or whatever else you know um, there are multiple different textures base game textures I've just used the ones from the European map if you use ones from the US map the Ravenport map you might find that they're slightly different again so uh, they might have different designs or whatever else you could use those instead and just you know do whatever you want there make up something however you want to do it so we'll do that let's close that down so we now have that we don't need the windows anymore because we've integrated those into the actual cottage <coughs> so we now have all of our parts there set up okay so what we're going to do then is actually add the cottages into the map itself I'm just using Felsbrunn uh, but uh, whatever map you want to go with so <coughs> I'm going to create a new folder I'm just going to call this textures that's fine 
And what we'll do here is just take the textures that I've got for this. So uh, let's do that. And we'll copy those over into that folder like so. And then what I'm going to do is copy over the i3Ds. So we'll just do like that. And then we'll copy those into the folder there like so. And then what we need to do then is just adjust the um, file names so that it points in the right, right place. So we can just take a copy of the name of the folder there and I'll just open up the uh, <coughs> open up the i3d in notepad++ so we'll just do that and then copy that and paste all of those in where appropriate so something like that and then we go ahead and save that close that and then I can do the same with this one so we'll open this up in Notepad++ and then we'll just paste that in there as well, like so. And we'll save that. And it's always worth just opening one, at least one of them up in the editor and make sure that it gives you no errors and whatever else. We've got no errors <coughs> in the console, so fantastic. And then we're just going to open up the map, so if we bring that up in the giant editor. Now like I said, I'm not going to get too fancy with all this, I'm just going to plonk them down on the map and then we'll just look and see what they look like in game. Let me get my nav speed up a little bit so we can get around the map a bit quicker. So we'll just kind of maybe, I don't know, somewhere over here, that's fine. So just so we can see this a little bit easier, what I'll do is I'll remove the grass, uh, the grass foliage. So I'm just going to go window, train editing, <clears throat> if we come down to grass, train foes paint mode, I'll switch over to a square brush and let's just increase that a little bit, there we go, something like that. I'm just going to right click and drag. And get rid of the grass there. So it's not coming up through the buildings and whatever else that'll do, that's fine. I don't think the terrain here is completely flat, but it will give you the idea at least of what to get out of it, so that's fine. <coughs> and then we can do whatever we want here, so I might create a new transform group and then just call this imports or something, you know, again, whatever you want to set up your scene graph, that'll do for me for this. So we're just going to go file, import, and... Uh, sample mod map maps I'm just going to bring in the cottage we'll go control B and place that there I'm just going to go file import cottage 1 control B and put that somewhere there like so and I'll just take both of those cut them and put them into that transform group and there we go we've now got both of our buildings in the map. You can see the, the massive difference just by going into Blender and changing the uh, windows a little bit. <clears throat> this this works fine, no problem with that. Works okay, uh, but just I think adding a little bit extra to it there with the actual um, <clears throat> detail just can kind of end, add a bit more to it in some scenarios. So choose whichever way you want to go with that so that's fine so we'll go ahead and save that then what I'll do is I'll put it in a mod folder <coughs> and we'll just pop in the game real quick and we'll have a look at that and just see um, <coughs> what everything looks like okay so here we are in game and oops, let's just turn that down uh, you can see there we've got our windows <coughs> with our curtains and whatever else different types of curtains there and some of these look exactly the same obviously because I didn't uh, change things up in certain places but that one's got the blinds in it there <coughs> so <coughs> by just doing that it adds a bit more to it as I say this one's just going to be plain straightforward grey windows you know again this is going to be for static buildings just for decoration 
so it just depends on how far you want to go with it like I said before if you've got a building that you want to add you're not very good with blender or you don't know how to use blender or whatever else uh, that's fine just you know go with the uh, other way of just using the giants editor and adding the primitive planes and setting all the different parts up there with the <coughs> dashboard light -like shader create your emissive texture simple basic emissive texture and go down that road like I say you want a bit more detail use blender or maya maya how you pronounce that I don't use maya maya <laughs> never know how to pronounce that that program but I don't use that program I use blender so I wouldn't know the first thing of how to do it in uh, that particular program but for blender um, hopefully what I've shown you there um, gives you a little bit of a direction to go in at least so <clears throat> if I just go into the console here GS set day night and we'll do 23 so it's dark and all the lights come on so by setting up those real lights we've got one in this window here and one in this window here which I think has done a very good job of actually showing the light just here so it's not overpowering uh, at all I think that looks pretty good and then again around the front of the building here I've got the emissive textures that one potentially might want to go back a little bit further because it's causing some issues with the uh, brickwork there but again you know that stuff stuff can be tweaked but in this case I've just got a, one light in the middle here on the door and it's illuminating the uh, porchway here quite nicely I think so that's fine then again on this one here uh, we've got just a single emissive texture there um, emissive plane with the illumination again that one might want to go back a little bit further because again it's kind of interfering with the uh, causing some um, I don't know what the word is there <coughs> overshine I don't know on the brickwork uh, but again it's illuminating the uh, the porchway and whatever else <coughs> and then again around the back of the building here we've got our emissive texture there and whatever else now this particular light I might have moved back a bit too far because there's no real light actually showing out on the ground <coughs> now I always find that uh, duplicating things like lights can cause problems so I tend to create new ones each time but that's not always the case because it clearly worked over here I think alright um, but uh, sometimes it can it might be the fact that that light is moved back too far um, or it could be a rotation thing not sure but irregardless you know that's kind of the way I would do it um, in the two different scenarios using the Giants editor only to set up your emissive plane and your texture and whatever else and then using the real light to actually give you some real light because um, we're not using the actual emissive texture to give us the illumination we're using the real light to do all that side of things the point light um, and then you know taking it a step further going into blender and then adding in some extra detail to the windows and uh, setting all of that up so hopefully what I've shown you there um, helps you out setting up different parts of your building and how to get illumination working and whatever else again this is for static buildings static decorative buildings that are going to be put into the map through the giants editor in the next video what i want to look at is actually doing the same thing but uh, with placeables so what i'm actually going to do is use these two buildings uh, so i don't have to go through the first process all over again because i've already done this part and set all the parts up there with all of the different uh, textures and the point lights and whatever else um, but we'll look at uh, how to then make the building a placeable for a starters um, and then creating the XMLs and what needs to be entered into the XML uh, to make the lights work because they work a little bit differently um, as a placeable what controls them um, they work a little bit differently the actual attributes need to be entered directly into the XML um, to make all of that sort of things work whereas a map based item uh, a map imported object it's just using the single script to uh, control all of the lighting um, in that sense <clears throat> but we can't use that script in a placeable um, using the placeable script we have to add what we we need to tell it what what we need it to do in the XML so we'll do that in the next video I'm Shaw Wizard thanks very much for watching I'll catch you on the next one.